And we continue with today's top story, the IPL auction for the 2024 tournament having been held here, the mini auction in Dubai at the Coca-Cola Arena. And some of those prices, nearly 25 crore uh, for Mitchell Stark, at 20.5 crore, uh, lat crore for Hyderabad. Uh, Rothman, Powell, Daryl Mitchell's gone for a lot of money. We've seen some mind-blowing amounts of money, Neil. Insane is the word. You know, when Pat Cummins was sold for 20.5, I thought... I think Mitchell Stark may not be able to cross him because that's like a record amount. But then the more Mitch Stark came in and there was excitement within Mumbai and Delhi and that excitement capped at about 9 crores, 10 crores and I was like, ah, okay, this is where it th- it pro- probably could change. Come SRH, they put in and raised the battle at 10 crores and a new battle started between Kolkata Knight Riders and SRH. To get my thoughts on this, we are joined via Zoom by the sports commentator and author Nishad Paivadia. Thank you very much for, for joining us this afternoon. Well, Neil and Kitch, it's good to be back. And what a day, isn't it, at the IPL auction now. I've been a part of a few auctions. I was there last year as well. And this time, boy, I must tell you, it's only a mini auction by name. It's nothing <laughs> but a mini auction. How, how much impact do you think Australia winning the World Cup in India only a, a few uh, weeks ago had on those signings of Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark? Massive, massive impact because... You know what? Indian fans grudgingly, okay, grudgingly, and I use that word again, respect the Australian team. And I would say they hate to love the Australian team now. Because right now you've got these Aussies who have come back into the World Cup after a tough start and gone on to win it by beating the team that looked like they were going to run away with it. But I think... Someone like a Travis Head at 6.8, I think he went for. That's a steal. I think Travis Head is a phenomenal cricketer. I was surprised he wasn't in the IPL all these years. He played the IPL in 2017 when he batted in the middle order for Royal Challengers Bangalore. And I think right now he's a much better cricketer. He's, of course, been bought by the Sunrisers Hyderabad. But with Mitchell Stark at 24 crores, 24.5 or 24.75, just, yeah, 7.5. I thought they were actually bidding for Mitchell Stark and Alisa Healy together. (laughs) Like if you had a women's team as well, you know, we'll actually play her. But but yeah, that's not the case. And I think uh, Mitchell Stark has really broken the bank. And I agree with you, uh, Neil, that when Pat Cummins made history at 20.5, I thought, okay, you know, that's it. We aren't going to go above that. Mitchell Stark at max, I thought maybe 11, 12. Gosh, that's nearly double that now. No, it, this is uh, incredible amounts that we're seeing floating around. But you know, while while there are some absolute stunners as far as money is concerned, I thought one Hindu Hasaranga at one point five crore was a steal. You know, for Sunrise Hyderabad to just pluck him at one point five and no one really coming into play, I thought that this probably gave them that little extra cushion to go out and buy and and bid really hard uh, for uh, Pat Cummins. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. And, you know, in a sense, you look at the value dipping in the IPL auction. I think last time Vanindu Hasaranga went for over 10 right. and around 11. And I must also tell you when the when the amount crossed 10, Hugh Edmeets, the IPL auctioneer, at that time had painted. And that's when we had that break. True. And then after he that, the painted. bidding continued with Charushan. <laughs> Charu <laughs> Sharma continued the auction yep. and it went, I think, around 11. And now he's... 10% of that value. In a sense, something similar happened to Krishnappa Gautam, who had gone for 9.5 crores or something to Chennai Super Kings. The next auction, he was bought for around 90 lakhs. So these things happen in the auction. I think Hasaranga didn't fit in the Chinnaswami Stadium. Hmm. You know, that plan that they have at the Chinnaswami Stadium. So I think it makes more sense in Hyderabad at the Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium, with the boundaries being a little bit bigger, a better buy for Sunrisers Hyderabad. No, definitely. When you say, you know, a better buy for Sunrise Hyderabad, uh, probably the value dipping also could be potentially because he didn't play the World Cup. He was not there for the uh, Asia Cup before that. He's come out, coming out of an injury. You know, how fit would he be to actually be of service for the entirety of the tournament? Even that could be of question. And, and maybe because of that, you know, the others were not really 100% interested or invested in a player like Vanandu Hasaranga who can bat, who can bowl, who can literally, you know, change the game on his own. But... Having said that, you know, there is another player that one was talking about and, and in my opinion, also went slightly low and that is Rachin Ravindra. 
played like a superstar in the World Cup. Young lad can bowl, can bat, can do literally everything. Didn't really pick, you know, didn't really get the prize that, in my opinion, that he should have come to him. Yes, I thought it was going to be around four or five at Easy. max. Yeah. I thought that's what Rachin Ravindra is going to get. But I'm actually happy for Rachin Ravindra, and I'll tell you why. He's going to be playing for the Chennai Super Kings under Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Right. In a sense, he's going to get his cricketing MBA <laughs> from the Mahendra Singh Dhoni School of Cricket. So, for his overall growth, I think this is exactly where destiny planned him. And I think it's going to be an experience that's going to really help him grow. And I think why they've picked him is Moin Ali. He's 36, 37. Mm. Next season, if they want to retain someone, Ravindra could be a like-for-like -like replacement. Nishad, uh, we know you're busy, so we're generous. You know, we we know you're being generous with your time. Uh, huh. But on that situation with Ruchin, uh, I, I know his accountant will say, "Oh, it's a shame we didn't go for more money." But do you think that might help his cricketing uh, ability? Because suddenly he won't be under so much pressure that if he's gone for a huge amount, he's not going to be out in the middle going, "I have to perform here because I'm under so much money." Exactly. And I think the price tag does affect a lot of players because, you know, when they come in, they, they are human after all. And yes, there's always a thought that, you know, pressure is something that comes onto you when you start thinking about what others are thinking about you. Mm. And exactly those are the thoughts that go into a young player's head that, oh my God, I've gone for like five or six crores. What if I don't perform? What's going to happen to me next year? What's social media going to do? Are they going to troll me? So yes, I think in a way... It's a win-win for Achin Ravindra. A, you're playing under MS Dhoni. You're going to learn how to handle pressure. B, you don't have that pressure at all. Now, there's no expectation as such. You're just going to go out there and you've got a captain who's going to tell you that, young man, just go out there, express yourself and enjoy your cricket. That, that's a very interesting point that you make of a captain, uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Now, there is a captaincy trouble for SRH. Who do they make captain? Does Aidan Markram continue being the captain of SRH? Or just because you've got Pat Cummins, a World Cup winner, do you just announce Pat Cummins as your captain? That's going to be very interesting. And I think a lot of it will also depend on the SA20. Now, Aidan Markram was identified as a leader very early in the South African system. In Dubai, he won the Under-19 World Cup yep. in 2014. And then, last year, he was also the captain of Sunrisers Eastern Cape, which sort of gave the confidence to the Sunrisers management, you know, let's appoint him as a captain here as well. A very good head on his shoulders. Now, you're going to wonder, are you going to try to tinker so many things, especially after three seasons of instability. I think you take a punt on Aidan Markram just the way you've done with David Warner back in 2015, made him captain, held on to him, and then Warner delivered as a captain in the next two seasons. Well, we appreciate your time. It's fascinating to see some of the uh, the, the results from the mini auction. Nishad Paivadia, the sports commentator and author. Uh, we also have to give you the award of the clearest Zoom uh, video. <laughs> you've got the best setup, home setup of anyone that we've spoken to. So we thank you. Oh, for I've your... got everything. I've got a ring light. I've got a I, ring light. We can tell. It was like right yeah, here. Yeah, it looks, it <laughs> looks good. Like... It looks good. And my pressure. Yeah. And my pressure <laughs> he's, behind He's me. got books behind him, so he looks like he's a, a lawyer as well. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. <laughs> Good to speak to you. So uh, what do you make of that? IPL uh, 2024, so many dynamics. Uh, and, and obviously that issue with some of the players, it does affect your performance because you suddenly look at, oh I'm, oh, I'm the big international star here. I've suddenly got to deliver and perform above my ability. Which is so true. Psychologically, you need to probably live up to the expectations of the big bucks that have been given to you. And will Mittelstark and Pat Cummins be able to deliver Every single delivery when they come out to bowl, mind you, I did my mathematics and they are paid 32,000 dirhams per delivery for Mitchell Stark to come out and bowl. 32,000 dirhams a delivery. Now that is some kind of pressure. If you've got any thoughts, how did your team go? 0586861.